When you see warnings like this, when you read things about how you don't understand, Lewis, fixing an electric car is dangerous. It has a battery and it has a heavy motor and it could move or it could electrocute you. Yeah, I mean, if you're working on your car, you could burn yourself. There's stuff in there that's like four or 500 degrees that could be boiling, that could burn you. There is liquid that runs through an internal combustion engine vehicle. You may have heard of it. It's called gasoline. It is flammable. It goes on fire, and it is all over this car, and it runs through it, and you can open your hood just fine. And you may think, well, Lewis, listen, it's a car. You have to worry about safety. No, you don't. This is everywhere. Because when we talk about something like replacing a battery in a smartphone, exact same argument gets used. We're not talking about 7,000 cells. We are talking about one cell. When we're talking about replacing the screen on a laptop, the exact same excuses get used. What do you hear said by every single lobbyist? Security, safety. You can't let independents do it because of security, safety. We can't let the end user fix their product because security, safety, security, safety, security, safety. If you think it is just about cars, you are missing the point. These exact same arguments are getting used nowadays where we would have never used them 30 or 50 years ago on items where the only way that you are going to hurt yourself working on this is if you beat yourself over the head with it. Come on. Hey, everybody. How's it going? I hope you're having a great day. So today I'd like to read an article that is about a screenshot that somebody had sent me, and I thought that it really kind of demonstrates where the culture is shifting with regards to repairability, but also risk tolerance. There's a lot I want to talk about in this article. So this says, how do I open the Mercedes EQS hood? The Mercedes EQS is a high-end electric vehicle, because again, it's going to be quite a while before you actually start seeing practical, affordable electric vehicles. Oh. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. I'm actually recording. I'm not even streaming, and that just showed up on my screen. That's, I don't know. I don't think I deserve that, but thank you. Thank you. So it says, even though Mercedes says you can't open the hood on an EQS, it's not impossible. A photo on Reddit's asshole design subreddit recently got a lot of attention showing Mercedes' EQS infotainment system warning screen titled, Notes in the Hood. Only the specialist personnel of a qualified repair workshop should open the hood. Understandable. Access by the customer is not permitted. Not understandable. To open the hood, consult a qualified specialist workshop. And obviously the first thing that I'm thinking and the first thing that you're probably thinking when you read this is who the fuck are you to tell me whether or not I can open up something that I purchased. If I spend $10,000, $50,000, $100,000, $150,000 dollars on your product, you bet your ass that you don't have the right to tell me whether or not I can open it or service it, F you. That's my immediate thought there. So it continues, and it says the warning screen then lists five other sub-warnings informing the reader there's a risk of accident in injury with the Mercedes EQS's hood open. Furthermore, it says only the specialist personnel of a qualified specialist workshop should open the hood. Access by the customer is not permitted. The Reddit thread title, this new Mercedes EQS that locks you out from opening the hood, and that warning makes it seem like it's literally impossible for Mercedes EQS owners to open the hood. It's like Mercedes is locking out customers on purpose. So is it possible for anyone, including Mercedes EQS owners, to open the hood? Yes, anyone can open the hood to a Mercedes EQS. According to a Mercedes technician, and I quote, the lever to open the hood is still down there. Mercedes put a plastic cover over the hood release. Anyone can pull the cover out and open the hood if they really wanted to, but there's no gas struts or prop, so something has to be jammed in there to prop the hood up. Why Mercedes legally has to warn you to not open the hood of a Mercedes EQS and why you probably shouldn't. If you didn't already realize, the Mercedes EQS is an electric vehicle. Like the Tesla Model S, the EQS comes in single and dual motor configurations. While other EV manufacturers make the space where an engine normally would be into a frunk, Mercedes filled the EQS with a pre-filter housing for its HEPA filtration unit. Although regular people and owners are instructed not to use the hood, there are practical reasons like the Mercedes EQS even has a hood in the first place. Despite the electric motor and battery pack technically being lifetime units, it doesn't make them immune to repairs and troubleshooting as needed. If repairs or maintenance by qualified technicians is needed, access from up top via the hood is there. Redditor Ryston77 makes it doubly clear, quote, It's an all-electric car. Nothing under the hood is user serviceable without special equipment to place the high-voltage system into servicing mode. Okay, I mean, I, I think that the first issue there is that there is special equipment that's not going to be made available to you in your garage to be able to place the vehicle into servicing mode. I mean, th there is a risk of harm or injury when you open up the hood of your own car. 
I was doing a live stream where I was dri- I was driving a piece of crap Nissan Sentra. It was a rental unit. It was like the third or fourth. The first one had an issue with the steering column. Second one, I think, had an issue where it just started smoking on the highway. The third one had a check engine light. And the fourth one, I think, had an issue where it was constantly overheating. So on the fourth one, somebody said, you know, check the coolant. But by the way, you know, somebody just reminded me because they figured I was new to cars. Don't don't open this up. Don't mess with the coolant. While the engine is still boiling, you could burn yourself or do something horrible. It's very possible when opening the hood of your internal combustion engine vehicle to hurt yourself. Very possible if you don't know what you're doing to hurt yourself. We don't tell people you are not permitted to open the hood. We may say something along the lines of, listen, you may not want to open the hood unless you're an expert, unless you know what we're doing. We're not legally liable. But you are not permitted to open the hood is not language that I think we have culturally come to accept in in our society. But it's kind of the way the Overton window is shifting with regards to risk being risk averse with any sort of danger. And it's something that I think is important to mention here. So he says, washer fluid is added at the front left fender. There are no fluids under the hood for the owner to check, just the two AC three-phase motors and the high-voltage inverter converters, a.k.a. the shit that makes the car go, which you may want to service outside of a Mercedes dealership at some point, if you, if you know what I'm saying. This is also a very expensive luxury model. Most owners do not self-service. Again, yeah, sure, fine. Most owners do not self-service. You are not permitted to open the hood No. That's why the hood is not user operable. Here's another warning Mercedes gives you in their owner's manual. As the manual hints at, there's more harm than good that comes from non-professionals and owners opening the hood for whatever reason. And again, is this something that cannot be said of internal combustion engine vehicles? I love servicing my electric bike. I work on my electric bike all the time. I've had one issue where I bought batteries from Unit Pack Power, which were bullshit because they're a garbage battery company. Besides that, Every single electric bike I've built has been beautiful. I love working on them. I love servicing them. But I don't know anything about internal combustion engines. I am completely ignorant when it comes to how a internal combustion engine car works. Therefore, I don't open up the hood because there actually is a good chance of me hurting myself, burning myself, or fucking something up because I don't understand it. My point here, are they saying anything about electric vehicles that simultaneously does not apply to internal combustion engine vehicles? I don't think they are. The idea that if you are ignorant and not knowledgeable that you could hurt yourself or break the car by opening the hood, I think is just as true for an internal combustion engine car as it is for an electric vehicle. I guarantee you, you give me a wrench, a screwdriver, and some tools and tell me to open up and figure out what's wrong with an ICE car, I will fuck that shit up good because I don't know what I'm doing. And it's the same way that if a genius opens up a MacBook and tries to do a board repair, listen, it's going to end poorly because it's not what they do. What drives me nuts with all of this is how you can just kind of see the Overton window for how risk averse we are just shifting and shifting and shifting and shifting further away from freedom with each passing generation. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, again, I've used 84 volt bike batteries. Again, obviously the batteries on my bike are not as strong as the batteries in a car. But, you know, I have tools that I use to disconnect everything so that I don't have power going through the motor while I'm working on it so I don't shock myself. And these are are basic precautions I would take with this. And if you include a manual that says, here's how you do it, and you make the tools available for somebody to be able to disconnect this so that they could do something like fix the motor of their car in their garage, I think that you would see less, just a little bit less of a cultural war when it comes to electric vehicles. Because I'll be honest with you, I am a big electric motor and electric vehicle fanboy. Whether it's an electric scooter, whether it's an electric bike, whether it's an electric car, I have fun with them all. Ford Mustang Mach-E, Tesla Model 3, uh, you know, a Sabvaton controller with a Cyclone motor, or a Phase Runner with a BBS HD and a Bafang bike. I love messing with electric motors. I think they're incredibly fun. They're exciting. They're cool to work on. On my live channel, there's a couple of streams from one or two years ago where I opened up a motor that wasn't working. I greased everything up. I removed all the dirt. I put it back together. It spun. It's incredible fun, and I enjoy doing it. And the thing that drives me the craziest about all of this is how the way the Overton window has shifted away from freedom and more towards being risk averse so that we can, quote, protect your safety. What's happening here is they are taking advantage of the fact that we are less risk averse now than we were 30 or 40 and 50 years ago in order to make more money and in order to just continue moving us towards a more disposable society. I love electric motors because I know about them. I understand that they are inher- they're very simple and they're also very easy to repair 
in contrast to an internal combustion engine vehicle. I'm not saying internal combustion vehicle engines are inherently bad. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you have less parts, it is simpler, it is easier to work on. And what bothers me is that when you have stuff like this, when you see how Tesla treats customers, when you see these Mercedes, uh, you know, these pop-up screens telling you you're not permitted to open the hood of your vehicle, what they're doing is they're putting the message out there that electric vehicles are inherently less serviceable because they are electric. Your average person that is used to the fact that an internal combustion engine car is repairable, and then they see all of this where you can't buy parts or you're not allowed to open the hood of your own vehicle, that sends the message to them that an electric vehicle must be inherently less repairable than an internal combustion engine vehicle. And that is fundamentally not true. And the reason that reading stuff like this drives me nuts and pisses me off so much is because I know enough to understand that you can make something that is electric that is repairable. People like Rich Rebuilds know this. People like the people like Gruber Motors know this. They understand that simply because a vehicle is electric, that may mean it is different it's a different repair procedure than an internal combustion engine car. It's a different skill set you're going to need, but that doesn't mean it's inherently less repairable. If anything, less parts, more simple, should be easier to repair. And it's not more difficult to repair just because it's electric. It's more difficult to repair because the companies have gone out of their way to not make available to independents what would allow them to be able to do their job the same way that I talk about in this channel when it comes to MacBooks or iPhones or medical equipment or anything else. I remember when I was younger, I, I just rem it's crazy because I don't think that most parents would ever consider allowing this today. And when I talk to people about it, they look at me like I'm crazy. But um, like my dad tells me about this too. You know, when he was a kid, you know, he, when he was done with his homework and all the stuff he had to do and he did all his chores, he was allowed to just go outside. Just go outside in the 50s, in the 60s, in the Bronx, during the 50s and during the 60s, in the South Bronx, my dad just went outside. And, you know, again, he, he would play football or stickball or tag or, you know, boxing or whatever the hell else with the other kids. And then he would come back in time for dinner around 7, 8 o'clock at night. You didn't have cell phones back then. You didn't have beepers in the 50s and 60s or any of that stuff. They trusted him that he would come back. And that's just something that's considered insane now. And I was allowed to do the same thing. You know, I, I would do my homework, get everything done, leave my, leave my house at 4 o'clock. And my dad would just say, you know, be back in time for dinner. Sometimes I'd come back at 7 or 8 or 9 o'clock. He just trusted that I was going to come back. It wasn't this, we didn't live in this sort of society. I was like, oh my God, are you, are, who's watching you? Where will you be? I want you to have this beeper or this cell phone on you. I need to know where you are at all times. I need to know what you're doing. I had a little bit of freedom, and I noticed that, again, this is kind of unrelated to this particular topic, that when I talk about that, there are people that say, there's no way in hell I would let that happen. There's no way, what if there's a predator? What if there's a criminal? What if there's this? What if there's that? Which is really interesting to me, because 30 to 50 to 70 years ago, there was actually a higher crime rate than there was today. All segments of society, I mean, even I think COVID is, in, is a decent example of this, of how the window has kind of shifted of, to valuing being more risk averse over freedom. It's shifting in every way possible. And when you see stuff like this, when you see warnings like this, when you read things about how you don't understand, Lewis, fixing an electric car is dangerous. It has a battery and it has a heavy motor and it could move or it could electrocute you. Yeah, I mean, if you're working on your car, you could burn yourself. There's stuff in there that's like four or 500 degrees that could be boiling, that could burn you. There is liquid that runs through an internal combustion engine vehicle. You may have heard of it. It's called gasoline. It is flammable. It goes on fire, and it is all over this car, and it runs through it, and you can open your hood just fine. We're going to have to make a decision at some point as a society on what we are okay with accepting. How far are we willing to go to convince ourselves that safety is valuable above freedom in every single possible way, even down to a company making a car and claiming you're not permitted to open the hood on it. Not that you shouldn't, but if you don't know what you're doing, you're not permitted to open the hood on your vehicle. Yeah, there's nothing important in there. Yeah, there's nothing important in there. You know, we, we, there's a motor and there's an inverter and, you know, the stuff that allows your car to go, like the main shit that makes it a car. Yeah, but that's, that, that, that's not for you, the owner, to look at. That seems crazy to me. It genuinely seems nuts. And you may think, well, Lewis, listen, it's a car. You have to worry about safety. No, you know, this is everywhere. Because when we talk about something like replacing a battery in a smartphone, exact same argument gets used. We're not talking about 7,000 cells. We are talking about one cell. When we're talking about replacing the screen on a laptop, the exact same excuses get used. What do you hear said by every single lobbyist? Security, safety. You can't let independents do it because of security, safety. We can't let 
the end user fix their product because security, safety, security, safety, security, safety. If you think it is just about cars, you are missing the point. These exact same arguments are getting used nowadays where we would have never used them 30 or 50 years ago on items where the only way that you are going to hurt yourself working on this is if you beat yourself over the head with it. Come on. They're not trying to protect you. They're protecting their wallet. And I think they're taking advantage of the fact that we live in a much more risk-averse world now than we did 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years ago to try and shift the culture away from a culture that valued freedom and repairability. Oh, yeah, you know, that's, that thing weighs 4,000 pounds. It can go 80 miles an hour. But sure, fix the brakes in your driveway. You do you. To a culture where you want to open your vehicle? I think it's bullshit. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If there's one message I hope anybody comes away from this video understanding, it is that electric vehicles are not inherently less repairable simply because they are electric vehicles. If they are, it is because of the manufacturer going out of their way to ensure it is by either not making the tools or parts available or because they have chosen to construct it in a way where it is less repairable. This has everything to do with the fact that internal combustion engine vehicles came out during a time where we were less risk averse and we valued freedom and the ability to repair our own property and we took pride in working on our own stuff versus now where god forbid you may hurt yourself if you try to replace the keyboard in your laptop because while you're doing it i don't know you may bash your head in by accident experience the fun really just like get a phase runner from ebikes.ca get a bbs hd and just put it together it just have it have it run on your desk and like, just like mess with the PID loop a little bit and have some fun and just, you know, have a little throttle on your desk just so you could see what it's like. It really is. Open up a BBS HD. Open the thing up. Open up a Cyclone motor. Get it to its guts. Get it to its core. The same way that I did on the live channel a year ago. If I find that, and I remember to put it, I'll put it in the description down below and see how it's put together. This is not some sort of crazy thing. This is not some sort of thing that only people that have a 180 IQ can work on, that you're too stupid to do anything with. If you were able to learn how to work on an internal combustion engine vehicle in your garage, I'm confident that you could learn with the proper tools and manuals and everything else how to safely and securely work on your own electric vehicle in your own home. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Bye now.